This lesson deals with lab number one, which is introduction to the oscilloscope, function generator, and digital multimeter. These are the tools we're going to be using to take measurements and also do troubleshooting. Our first instrument is called the oscilloscope, or just scope for short. The oscilloscope is an instrument which can display voltage versus time. The scope used in this lab is also referred to as a two-channel digital storage scope. The two-channel means that you can observe two different voltages at the same time. And digital storage means that the voltage is converted to a binary number, stored, and then displayed on the oscilloscope face. Suppose we take our function generator and create a 6-volt sine wave at 1 kilohertz. This is the mathematical representation of that. It's 6 times the sine of 2 pi times 1000 t. Displayed here is the face of the oscilloscope with this hooked up to it. A couple things I'd like to show you. First is this little ground symbol, and that's exactly that. This is where the 0-volt reference line is. So we're three major divisions above it and three major divisions below it. Now over here is the y-axis scale. So we have three divisions times two volts per division. So it's a six volt peak. And then it also swings minus six volts. In terms of the period, we have one, two, three, four, five major divisions. And then here is the scale per major division. So five times 200 microseconds per division would be 1000 microseconds or one millisecond. And the reciprocal of that would be a frequency of one kilohertz. This is shown at the bottom of the page with the details of the calculations. In ECE 201, we introduced the idea of a resistor. Many resistors have four bands that indicate their designated value. Well, let's take a look at a four band case. Take my resistor and orient it this way where the bands are mostly to the left, and then we have four different colors. The colors associated with a value, black is zero, brown is one, red is two, orange is three, yellow is four, green is five, blue is six, violet is seven, gray is eight, and white is nine. The fourth band indicates a tolerance. If you had a gold band here, it would be 5%, a silver band, 10%, and also a blank band, that would indicate 20%. Let me show you how to calculate the resistance based on these colors through an example. So the first band is a placeholder, the second band is a placeholder, and the third band is the power of 10. And of course, our fourth band was our tolerance. Suppose we had a red, violet, yellow, and gold set of bands. Well, on top here, red is two, violet is seven, and yellow is four, and gold is 5%. What that implies is that this is a 270K ohm resistor, plus or minus 5%. And what that means is that the actual value of resistance would fall somewhere within a 5% band. In other words, if you multiply this, by 1 minus 0 0.05 and multiply this by 1 plus 0 0.05, you get 256.5K and 283.5K. So our actual resistor value falls somewhere between these two values. That's a pretty big range. So what we're going to take a look at next is using a digital multimeter to measure resistance. In lab, we have a Fluke digital multimeter, model 8840A. And with this meter, we can measure a variety of things one of which is resistance, and there's actually two different ways of doing that. The first method we're going to look at is called a two-wire resistance measurement. Now, this Fluke digital multimeter uses a current source to create a voltage drop across an unknown resistor. Then by measuring the voltage across the face of the instrument, we can approximate the value of the unknown resistor. Here's a little drawing of what's hooked up inside the multimeter and then external to it. So inside the meter, there's a current source. And then we're going to hook up our resistor with actually a grabber wire and then return it back this way. In the course, we're going to use colored wires to make it easier to find things in our building of a circuit and also from testing. So we're going to use red wires when we talk about a high or positive voltage and black wires for a low. It doesn't make any difference which color you use, but this will be easier for finding mistakes in wiring. Now, this current source is going to want to flow into the circuit and also into the voltmeter. If you recall from 201, the resistance of the voltmeter is extremely high. So most of that current just goes right in this wire, through the sample, back to the low, and then back to the current source. On the next page, I'll show a equivalent circuit of this interconnection, and we'll see how the meter calculates the approximate value of the unknown resistance. So what's shown here is an equivalent circuit of the previous page. So here we've got our current source. We're using a voltmeter to measure the voltage across the face of the instrument. And then coming out of the high terminal, I had a red wire hooked up to my unknown resistor and then a black wire coming back to the low side. We do Kirchhoff's voltage law. The rise in voltage equals the drop across this resistor, the drop across this one, plus the drop across this one. What's the drop here? It's going to be the current I that's flowing times the resistance of the red wire, the current I times the resistance of the unknown, 
And then lastly, the current times the resistance of the black wire. Well, there's a common eye here, so you can pull it out and divide through. So the ratio of the voltage to the current would be the sum of these three resistances. Now we're measuring resistors in lab in general that are in the thousands of ohm range, and these wires have resistances in the order of 50 milliohms. So the sum of these three could be approximated as just the value of the unknown resistance. And again, this would of course be that these two added together are much smaller than this. So again, what size of resistors are we looking at for wires? The typical grabber wire we're using in lab is about 50 milliohms. With thinner wires, you could have resistance as high as 500 milliohms. Again, these would be small compared to things in the k-ohm range. What if you wanted to measure something that was small, say in the 1-ohm range? Is there some way to do that with this instrument? One way to measure small resistances is to use an option on the Fluke digital multimeter called the four-wire resistance measurement. Now, if you go back to what we did previously, we had a current source feeding through our wire to our sample to our turn wire. And we're measuring the voltage at these terminals, but if you bring out a separate set of wires and measure the voltage across the sample, well then we don't have that drop across the wires included with our measurement. And this is shown at the bottom of the page. So now we have the current going through our sample and then bringing the wires over here to measure the voltage across it. So now the ratio of this voltage to this current is just the value of the resistance. This does take two more wires, and we won't normally do this unless the resistance is in the 10 ohm or less range. Just like our resistors had a tolerance, our instruments also have a tolerance. The Fluke 8840A is what's called a five and a half digit multimeter. And what this means is that we have six places, one, two, three, four, five, and six. But this place can go from zero to nine, and so can these others except for the first digit, which only goes between zero and one. This is due to the digitizing of the signal, and it's referred to as a half digit in that this digit can go between zero and one, so it's one out of two possible digits. Kind of an odd way to describe that, but that's what that means. If you had a three quarter digit, that would mean this could go between zero, one, two, and three out of four possible digits. Let me do an example to show you what the accuracy of a reading is. Suppose that we're on the 20K scale, and what that means is that the value here can go up to 19.9999K. Now on that scale, the accuracy is 0.0028% of the reading plus two digits, or what are called counts. So if we had a reading that was 13.3413K ohms, we would then take 0.0028% of that reading, which is adding two more zeros, and this is the result that we get. And then we're going to add to that two digits or two counts. Just take the same places that are here. So here's the first place, second place, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And in that sixth place, put a two. If the accuracy were seven digits, you'd put a seven here. If it was 10 digits, you put a one zero here. But also include the unit. Here it's k ohms. Now we're going to add those two together. And we're going to use this to calculate a tolerance around our reading. Now you can see here that this term is about half the error. Now if you had a lot of leading zeros, this would be pushed over more, and this would really account for the minimum error. Let's take a look at calculating the range on our reading. So we measured 13.3413K, but what this is saying is that there's a range around that value, and we're going to subtract and add that number we had on the last page. And so our actual value of resistance is between this number and this number. A tighter tolerance that we had for the resistor, but indeed there still is a range. What this is really saying is that of these six places, what we have here that's common in the two parts of our span is that these four digits are the same. And then after that, they begin to change. So we could trust these first four places, and these two would be falling into our range of accuracy. Now this is quite good. Most meters have tolerances on the order of 1% or half a percent. Now to see if you got the ideas we just introduced, suppose that I had this as my reading, 0.32786 megohms. Could you repeat the same procedure with the same errors and show that R falls between these two values? I don't have to hand this in. It's just a chance to see if you've got the ideas down. In lab, we're going to have various wires and connectors to interconnect our circuits to our equipment, one of which is going to be a BNC connector or a BNC wire. A BNC cable looks something like this, where I've got a piece of solid copper wire surrounded or embedded in a polyethylene dielectric, which means a very high resistive material. And all of that is surrounded by a braided metal shield. And then that's enclosed with a plastic jacket. What you effectively got is a wire and then another wire, which we're going to make ground. So the typical connectors you'd have on a BNC wire or connector. It's two pieces that connect and then you just turn and lock them. And what that does is preserve the shield. In other words, it protects any extraneous signals from getting in. Now this wire has a really nice characteristic in that it looks almost like a perfect wire until you get in the gigahertz range. Most of our measurements will be in the audio range. 
And that means that we'll have a very good connection that we can basically ignore the wires that we're connecting into our circuit. Now for low frequency interconnections, mostly DC, we're gonna use banana to banana wires. The word banana comes from how this connector looks. If you were to peel a banana and put it back together, it kind of looks like this. And what is it is like a set of spring contacts. So it's gonna make a pressure connection as you push it into the receptacle. We also have another one with a grabber clip on it, and that allows you to grab into your circuit. This is just a single wire in both cases, so we'll need two of these because of ground. Now you can also make your own banana to grabber by taking an alligator clip and putting this end onto this one, and then you can probe into your circuit. We'll mostly be using the banana to grabbers in connecting some of our instruments to our circuit, and we're we'll using these types of wires to make other types of connections. Now every lab has a purpose, and the purpose of this lab is to introduce the oscilloscope, function generator, and digital multimeter as our basic measurement and testing tools. This will be our first time use of this equipment. Now each lab has concepts and techniques. The concepts that we covered are the resistor color code and the accuracy of the components in the digital multimeter. What we'll see in the lab, we'll learn how to measure voltage, amplitude, and, and time with an oscilloscope. We'll measure resistors, and we'll measure resistance using a four-wire probe. When you come to the lab for the first time, there's going to be a quiz at the beginning of the period. It's going to cover these lab lecture notes, this video which explains those lecture notes, and then the lab itself. In other words, I can have you read through the lab experiment. And this is lab number one, Introduction to the Oscilloscope, Function Generator, and Digital Multimeter.